Hello again, today is November 23rd, 2014, and I wanted to overview a simple understanding of phase transitions. It's basic thermodynamics, and people who study stars seem to ignore these phase transitions. For instance, you have plasma, gas, liquid, and solid material. And depending on how much energy is inside of these materials will depend on what its phase is. This is called enthalpy. That basically means the amount of energy that's inside a system. Liquids are lower than gases, which are lower than plasmas. And plasmas cool and recombine into gas. They also ionize, gas also ionizes to plasma. And then you have gas being vaporized, I mean liquid being vaporized into gas, and then you have gas condensing into liquid, and you have liquid freezing into solids, and solids melting into liquids, and you have gas depositing as solids. That can also be known as crystallization. And then you have solids sub subliming into gas. This is what CO2 does when it's in its solid form. It sublimes into gas. Now, this is very important because you have to realize that the enthalpy of the system increases as you go up. So naturally, what would happen if you were to reverse that process? If a star is hot and plasmatic, it will recombine into gas, correct? Luckily, that's exactly what they do. Hot plasmatic stars recombine into gas and they become what are called brown stars or brown dwarfs or gas giants. Those gas giants then condense into liquids, blue dwarf stars, gray stars, Uranus, Neptune, which then solidify eventually in their interiors and they become solid stars such as black dwarfs, Earth, and then when they continuously cool, they become objects like Mercury, Mars, Moon, Pluto, and they're completely dead worlds with no atmosphere, no magnetic field, no anything. They're just the solid rocky remains of what was once a very bright shining star in this end of the spectrum. Unfortunately, establishment science seems to ignore these phase transitions because obviously it would go in reverse. The enthalpy of the system would decrease and the material that it's in its plasmatic state would be recombined into gas and that gas would go to solids and liquid material. This is basic thermodynamics. Um, one task I have is to let people know that during these phase transitions the star cools, it combines and shrinks and combines the elements into molecules. That means chemistry is very heavily involved in this. Unfortunately, when you go to pages such as the Nebular Hypothesis on Wikipedia or other types of scientific uh, um, websites or forums and you mention why is chemistry ignored, the reason why they ignore chemistry is because these are nuclear powered and these are just rocks and minerals and they're unimportant they're not really they're just sitting there and the reason why they do that is because of the spectrum problem they don't realize that the older stars don't have spectrums anymore um, besides that I think this basically really covers it up the star is the new planet and the planet is the ancient star thus the process of star evolution is the process of planet formation itself. The two were never mutually exclusive. Okay, alright, take it easy.